everybody. Welcome to Awesome Comics, your one-stop shop for everything comic book entertainment. Today is the return of our Versus series. In this Versus series, we take two of our panelists with opposing views, and we have them fight out a specific topic right here on the show. Today's topic. Can you guess? I don't know. <laughs> no, Who I don't could know. it be? I don't know. I don't know. We've got Scarlet Spider versus Gwen Spider-Gwen. <laughs> <laughs> so, flip, flip, flip. who is the better alternate uh, version of Spider-Man? We'll get into specifics on that in a minute. Uh, but first, well, we want you to make sure you like the Facebook page, and that's at Facebook Comics slash Awesome Comics Show. And I'm going to be doing an episode this week exclusive uh -huh. to Facebook on Thursday talking about Spider-Gwen. We'll cool. get into that later. More Spider-Gwen. She yeah. loves it. We love it. Good stuff. Okay, and then uh, new videos go up every Thursday, like she said. Thank you for taking part in our first uh, Facebook Live Q&A uh, video this past Saturday. We hope to do more of those in the future. Yeah. So, let's get to our panelists. First here, we've got Ayana Wade. That's me. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then to my left. Spider-Man? No. No? Wait. No. Who is, wait, wait. That's not Spider-Man? No. Who is it? It's me, guys. <gasps> it's Walter oh, the whole time. Yeah. The whole time. It was me. This is so weird being on this side of the table today. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. It's good. I'm excited. It's, it's an interesting view, right? Yeah, it is. It is different. Yeah. <laughs> I will admit. It is very... Very different. The power in that seat, man. I feel I've it. I've been I, there. I know. Like, like, what, twice now? Yeah. 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 With great power comes great responsibility. Thank oh, you. who I, said thank that? You. We need like a, an, you. an infinity gauntlet power. <laughs> For whoever sits in the oh. seat, that'd be actually yeah, really cool. Yeah, we, we need do. that. Let's, let's we write that down. Happen. All right, uh, let's get this rolling. First, we're going to do uh, Ayana's character history on Spider-Gwen. All right. Take it away. Gwen Stacy Spider-Woman debuted in Edge of Spider-Verse number two in September 2014 as part of the Spider-Verse comic book storyline. Her warm reception and popular design led to her own series Spider-Gwen in 2015, where in this Earth-65 alternate universe, Gwen Stacy was bitten by the radioactive spider instead of Peter Parker and becomes Spider-Woman. All right, very informative. Nice. Thank you very yeah. much. Nice. Walter, go ahead with your character history on <laughs> Scarlet Spider. Ben Riley is the first fully successful clone of Peter Parker, created by his nemesis, Professor Miles Warren, a.k.a. the Jackal. His first appearance was in The Amazing Spider-Man number 149 in October of 1975, but is much more famous upon his return in the infamous Clone Saga. He re-debuted with the name Ben Riley, a combination of Uncle Ben and Aunt May's maiden name, in Spider-Man number 51 back in October of 1994. Ben's rich character history includes leaving New York after finding out he was a clone of Peter. After many adventures on the road and years away from his home, Ben caught wind that Aunt May was in the hospital with a serious illness. He then returned to be by her side. His homecoming eventually resulted in Ben taking up the Scarlet Spider identity and even later becoming Spider-Man for a time when Peter retired after his wife Mary Jane Watson became pregnant. He was killed in a battle with the Green Goblin but remains a popular cult figure who from time to time resurfaces in some form or another in various comics since he met his end in the 90s. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Sounds like you had a really storied history back he there. Does. He does. <laughs> he does. All right. With further ado, let's get to question number one. That is, if they were to fight each other, who would win? Ayana, take it away. All right. So Spider-Gwen in her universe gets is like notorious for having to deal with lame villains. So she's beaten the vulture, but she has to go up against people like... Koala Commander, <laughs> the Bodega Bandit. Oh, that is So terrible. although she does a great job keeping her universe safe, it's very difficult to judge how she stands up against regular heroes when she's only given terrible, terrible, terrible villains to fight. <laughs> it's very hard. However, in Spider-Gwen Annual Number 1, she does end up teaming up with She-Hulk to wrestle after they go against each other in a wrestling match, luchador style. <laughs> and the announcer uh, announces that maybe She-Hulk has met her match. So she's very, very strong. She's also a very good teammate. Um, She's a very strong standalone character, but a very good teammate in the Spider Army, which she is a part of. And I don't know, I think on puns alone, Spider Gwen <laughs> would win. <laughs> okay, what about like her actual fighting style, though? How does she fight usually? Like, So her powers, uh, we're going ahead into powers then. Um, well, she has I mean, nearly identical powers to Spider Man. Mm -hmm. She is this Earth 65 Universe's version of uh, Spider Man. 
So Peter Parker never becomes Spider-Man. Gwen Stacy is actually bitten by the spider. Uh, Peter Parker actually ends up becoming the lizard and uh, dies. Whoa. So Peter Parker ends up kind of becoming her Uncle Ben and reason to continue as a superhero, mm -hmm. giving her the drive to do that. Um, so she has the same powers. She's able to stick and climb on walls. She has a spidey sense uh, for danger. She's able to lift uh, 10 tons. She has enhanced speed, endurance, agility. Um, she has expert detecting skills and analytical thinking. Obviously, she also has good detective skills because her father is a detective. Yeah. Um, and she's a freestyle fighter. So we're sort of in her part of her like origin story still. It's not quite flushed out of who she is as a character still, which makes for very interesting storytelling. It's very difficult for figuring out how she would hold up one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. So it's cool, but she's a very freestyle fighter, so she's not as uh, as trained yet, I would say. Okay, yeah. fluid in battle. Right, right. Okay. Well, Okay, so first of all, there's no way Ben Riley would fight any version of Gwen Stacy. Right. Let's just get that off the bat right now. There's absolutely no way, unless he's Such under mind control. Ben Riley is Peter Parker, basically. So I mean, he would never fight. There'd be Gwen too many Stacey. emotional things yeah. going on here. There, yeah. There's no way. But if they were <laughs> to actually fight, um, Ben is much more experienced with his powers than, than Gwen Stacy is at this point. Um, Spider Woman in in this current run is still very young. Is she still? High school or just right after no, high school? No, she's college. She's college, yeah, yeah. okay. So she's still like in her like early 20s at the yep. oldest right now. Um, ben has all the memories of Spider-Man uh, up until his cloning and you know that, that whole other life he made for himself, gave him different experiences and stuff. And he learned new things that Spider-Man never experienced. So he has all of Peter Parker with these different experiences that he, he went on the road and, and uh, got to take part in himself. So he's about like in his early 30s or late 20s, I think, in the, in the main run that he appeared in. So, um, yeah, he he's knows what to do in high-pressure situations. He, he can, he, like Peter Parker, he can analyze the situation, figure things out. He's very used to his powers, where, again, Spider-Gwen isn't quite... Uh, she just got her powers, like, in the comic, like, a year ago or mm -hmm. something, right? So she's still very inexperienced. Um, yeah, he, he also enjoys fighting more than Peter Parker does, which is an interesting tidbit. Ben Riley enjoys fighting more. Mm. Uh, that might be from his years on the road, just sort of fighting. Brawling it out, yeah. yeah. So he enjoys fighting more. Um, he's also extremely smart. He's got he's Peter's clone, so he has the genius level scientific in, intellect. So I think he's smarter than Gwen, and he beats her just about in every way in, in, in a matchup. You know, okay. I mean, it's not much of an argument. There's a wild card that she might win. Mm -hmm. I mean, you never know. But I I just think it's it's kind of a mismatch at this point until she gets a little older and more experienced. Okay. So here's the thing, though. What's the thing? Multiverse wristwatch. What is Gwen it? is able to travel from the multiverses, okay. from multiverse to multiverse in any area at all because of a wristwatch. Okay. So she could zip out, be back, right behind you, punch you in the back that's, of your head. That's a good <laughs> so, okay, She does actually, teleportation yeah, type so sense. it's basically, yes, but okay. teleport to the different multiverses. So she, she, uh, she teleports via space and time, so she's not, <gasps> she's not. She does. So she's not linear in where oh, she... Oh, so she can go back in time. And, okay. Okay. No, it's not time. <laughs> no, it's not time? No. No, it's not time? <laughs> just... Okay, so... That would be amazing, though, because I was just thinking of, like, Dr. Spider-Gwen, and oh, I got okay. really excited. <laughs> Sorry. Ugh, that'd be so cool, but no. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Let's see it. Let's see. Yep, so space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, that is, that is an advantage, but I think that the, the Spider-Sense would probably kick in before she can really do any damage with that. I mean, well, how far does the spider sense go? Does it go between the multiverses? As soon as she appears behind him, sure, he'd probably sure. at least, you know, catch it. So she'd have to be super precise. I don't right. know how precise that watch is. If she appears, like, right behind him is already, like, swinging for a punch or something, maybe she can get the we'll jump see. on him. We'll see. But, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it would be an interesting fight. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it'd be a long fight at this <laughs> point. But it would be interesting, to say the least. Okay. Okay, let's go on to question two. Who uses their spider abilities like the best or the most? Who who really like holds it down with just their spider abilities? I'm I'm starting gladly. Okay, so um, so as I said before, he's a clone of Peter Parker, so he has all of Peter's knowledge and everything. He's you know he has all the experience that Peter has up until the point he was cloned. So he has all that behind him. But Ben also invented ways of using his abilities that Peter never even thought of. He invented impact webbing. Mm -hmm. uh, these are fired out as a miniature web pellet that uh, explode on impact, encasing a target within a web cocoon and rendering him or her virtually immobile. He invented stingers. Those are small diamond-shaped darts coated in a paralyzing chemical agent to inca incapacitate opponents. He also invented mini dot tracers that are shaped like miniature frisbees and are much smaller and lighter than Peter's spider tracers. They're one-fourth of the size, which are much faster 
uh, when fired from the web shooters. Uh, he's also a bit darker with his powers and more stealthy. There's a couple stories uh, with him on the road that he sort of uses his powers like Batman. He's like in a house in shadows and comes out. Uh, is just more mysterious in uh, the way he fights people. And it's really cool. He's kind of like a scary character sometimes when he gets I'm mad. Spider-Man. Yeah, I'm Spider-Man. <laughs> um, all that, and like I said, he, you know, he has Peter's uh, intellect. And Spider-Man, who obviously, the Peter Parker version of Spider-Man, uses his powers to the, is the full potential that he possibly can, and Ben has that within him. So... Yeah, Ben is knows how to use his spider powers pretty well. Okay. Mm. Uh-huh. So her spider powers obviously are the same as Spider-Man. So same web so shooters. And everything. Same web shooters. Um, they actually go. Um, they were created by Janet Van Dyne, who's in the the 65 or 65 universe. Okay. And so she made her new ones, and they filter uh, moisture from the air that can help uh, create like the adhesiveness to them. So she swings. She uses them as ropes, as globs. They. Um, they don't require a refill as long as there's moisture present. So she, oh, nice. like, they really? don't run out. As long as there's moisture present, she's good to go. Um, that's so she's able that to do come that. come handy. That yeah. Right in the middle of a battle, just thwip, nothing. That's, we've seen it before. Mm-hmm. It happens a lot. So. Well, unless you're able to suck the moisture out of so, the yeah, world. That, that would be. Which <laughs> I don't <laughs> think is a spider I, power, but. You no. Know. <laughs> no, but it was. I'm just saying, like, like you know, she happen. could have that So, like, there's ben still, Riley. like, a, there's still, like, a thing that could happen there. But, mm-hmm. um, yep, there's no refills. So, if they're going on endurance alone, maybe. Oh, well, she can't run them. With the web. Might be spent. Mm. spent on the web. Right. Um, but yeah, so she's she's basically the, the same because she's this universe's version. So she's able to lift, she's able to climb, she uses it to fight every night, sometimes at the detriment of her band. Mm. The Mary Janes. The Mary Janes. Yeah, and they have the Face It Tiger song is real now. Oh, <laughs> oh is it? Yeah. I, I oh, have you not heard it? it? Oh my God. Face it, I don't know how yeah, it Yeah, go, go, go look it up, guys. I'm There's not going to sing it for you now. Yeah. You should definitely sing it. No. A couple bars. Nope. Oh, no, right. Go look it up. <laughs> it's a real song now. Right. Does she use her uh, so power? Does, does either of them use their powers like when they're not in Spider-Man gear, Spider-Gwen gear? Mm-hmm. Like, do they use it a lot in their personal life? Yeah, Ben. I mean, when he went on the road, he didn't want to be want anything to do with Spider-Man or being a vigilante or anything like that. So he kind of just used his powers. Like one of the uh, the most important things about Ben when he went on the road was that yeah, he didn't want to have anything to do with Spider-Man. So he basically cast his powers aside, didn't really use them, except when he's like really pushed. So like there's a there's a little story where um, he here over here someone's gonna rob a, a house or something at a certain time and that's where that him coming out of the shadows thing comes in and stuff. So he does use it a lot out of costume because at that point he really didn't care. Um, he didn't want to be Spider-Man anymore at that point. So he didn't want anything to do with Peter Parker. He wanted to create a completely new life for himself. So he does use his powers, you know, when he's really pushed. When there's something in front of him, he can't turn down that responsibility. So if, whether he's in or out of costume, he uses his powers. I mean, he tries to conceal his face a little bit. There's a couple things where he's got a bandana. Also, can I say, in the main run, Ben Riley has the sweetest mullet I think I've ever <laughs> seen in a comic book character. 90s mullet. Yeah, he's got, he's got Even better than uh, n- uh, Nightwing mullet? No, it's better than Nightwing oh. mullet because it's even curly. Kyle, even Kyle Rayner's. Did Kyle Rayner have a mullet? I don't think Back he did. The, I could have sworn he had a mullet. I don't think Kyle Rayner had a mullet, but I'm mm. pretty. I, I know Ben Riley did. It was a nice, flowing, curly oh, brown mullet with some nice five o'clock shadow. Like guy looks so gruff, and he was riding a motorcycle. Okay, hair alone, then Spider-Man automatically wins because she has <laughs> an amazing bob and a headband, she and does it's awesome. She does have a bob. No. Yes, it's a little she different. Does. Than it's the very different. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's more modern. It's like a it's like a modern like new millennia thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, she mostly doesn't use it in her everyday life. She's still in that like zone of her career too, where mm. she's still trying to hide who she is. Her dad knows that she's Spider Gwen, though. That came up because um, yeah. she keeps being hunted by the police. I thought that no, was interesting. Gwen! Shh, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Awesome. All but right. in the um, most recent issue, number eleven, she basically is like forced to step up with her responsibility and like kind of comes out <laughs> just busting through a wall nice. um so yeah. yeah so she she'll be starting to use them out of costume it looks like right at All least right. to throw so, people through shit final question i like this one the most who is the more interesting character overall who's the most interesting read I right, you want me to start? I will. Go for it. Okay, so I think Ben is one of the most interesting characters in all the MCU. Um, I think he's super underrated. Statement. Yeah, I think he's extremely underrated. I, I love Ben Riley. Um, he is Peter Parker, but if all this crazy clone stuff happened to him. I mean, th- imagine that you think you're a person your whole life, and then all of a sudden you realize that you're not the person you thought you were. How do you 
reconcile that. Uh, ben gets lost for a while. He goes on the road. He doesn't really have an identity, doesn't know who he is. Um, and him coming back to New York and everything is what sort of made his circle complete. I mean, um, yeah, the fact that he's not a stereotypical evil clone, it, that's a great mm -hmm. idea. I love the idea of a guy being cloned. I think we talked about this in the, in the Batman Top Ten about the, his Silicon Soul, mm -hmm. sort of retaining morality if he's really a clone or a copy of someone. Um, and yeah, Ben is perfect for that. He shares Peter's values and he puts them to the test in different ways because uh, Ben has, you know, been uh, been involved in some bad situations when he was away from New York for those years. Uh, but he's a really tragic character, I think, and this is important because everything he thought, like I said, was ripped away from him. He thought he was was ripped away from him, and he had to rebuild his life from the ground up. Even more tragic because he eventually returned to being Spider-Man after all those years. Uh, he was accepted as a brother by Peter and a member of the Parker family. He came all the way back, and after regaining all that, he dies sacrificing himself to save Peter after all of that. Just when he regained some semblance of what he lost, he dies saving the original Peter Parker. Uh, the years on the road also made him a more gruff character. He really uh, became a different person and a different character than Peter after those experiences and when all was said and done. So without a doubt, I think he's the more interesting character than Spider-Gwen. Well, Spider-Gwen is definitely the more interesting character right off the bat. She's a drummer for the Mary Janes, which is awesome. She has the multiverse wristwatch. She can travel through dimensions. There's a whole series of the Spider-Man like traveling through the multiverse with Silk and Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman. We've talked about it on the show before, actually, where they have adventures because of the multi uh, multiverse wristwatch, which is awesome. Um, her design, first off, is fantastic. That, that helped with her character's popularity in general, um, and it helps that she stands out completely from Silk and Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman, and even holds her own as a female variant of Spider-Man. She's not just like a, okay, we technically made Peter a girl, P Patricia or something. Yeah. <laughs> Patricia Parker. Patricia. Um, she holds her own as a character. Um, and uh, in some of the lists of the best alternate Spider-Man that you can find online, Newsarama ranked uh, Ben Riley at number six and uh, Spider-Gwen at number seven. However, Screen Rant ranked her at number two and Ben at number eight. Oh. Comics Alliance, no Ben, sorry, but <laughs> Spider-Gwen was number two again. And then mm. comicbook.com uh, ranked Spider-Gwen as number four. And thanks to Spider-Gwen, we now have characters like uh, Gwen Poole and uh, Gwenum. <laughs> Gwenum? And, mm -hmm. There's a Gwenum? Oh, yeah. No Gwenum? shit. Mm -hmm. Gwen, Venom, Gwen Venom. Like Venom Gwen? Gwenum. God. Gwenum. That's huh? enough of that. So, <laughs> no, there's not enough of it. So I think she is just a really, really interesting character. We get to see an origin story for... Spider-Man that's something we haven't seen. We get to see it through the eyes of a female, which is interesting, but also it's not just a copy. It's not like a photocopy. We're not getting the same stuff. We get to see a really completely different person having to go through similar things and becoming like a complete, completely different person and yet such a similar person in general becoming a superhero. So, okay. yeah. They both sound very interesting. I'd love to see Ben come back and be in I was gonna say, Dan Slott, bro. <laughs> Bring Damn, back. but this, uh, <laughs> there's there's a the clone conspiracy. I just, can I just say this really quick? Okay. There's there's an arc that's coming out I think next month called the Clone Conspiracy that's bringing back the Jackal and the main continuity with Spider-Man, and they're already bringing back other characters. Please, <laughs> please bring back Ben Riley. Please, Dan. If anyone, please share this with with Dan Slott. I don't know if he's going to see this or not. Probably not. But Dan, bring back Ben <laughs> Riley. For the love of God, man, you've been teasing it for years. You're upset. Bring him back. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please bring him back. Please. I want Ben back. Uh, not the main continuity Ben. Well, I'm not interested in Gwen Poole, but Gwenum seems just that Gwenum. seems so off the wall. But <laughs> I, I'd, I'd like to actually see that movie. Is it like a pink symbiote or something? That would be so funny. Mm. Is it a pink symbiote? We'll see. Oh, we'll that, see. That's great. We'll I'm see. not giving anything away. Oh, We're right. talking about Spider Gwen right, right now. It's not true. Gwenum. Different true. episode. All right. That was that was awesome. It was a good good banter between you guys. You like <laughs> so let's go to the picks a week. Right? Cool. Um, go pick up uh, Spider-Gwen Annual 1 for many, many reasons, as mm. I bend it and mm. ruin it forever. Um, but for one of the reasons, just right off the top of my head, I showed you guys this earlier, um, 
the Trump Modoc is hilarious. <laughs> That's so funny. Hilarious. The image of just Trump as Modoc with his tiny little hand it's saying tremendous, like, tremendous. I want to crush you. <laughs> Can't find it. Where the hell is it? Please Anyways, um, yeah, I went past it. Anyways, it's amazing. Um, also, there's definitely in the like luchador scene, like right at the beginning, there's freaking Lafayette and Hercules Mulligan. And he, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What? Amazing. Um, and then there's also uh, Captain America holding a hot sauce bat in here. That's amazing. Hot sauce bat? Hot sauce bat. Beyonce, bitch. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we'll talk. All right, all right. Um, and then the I spider no Gwyn, like penguin. Oh, there's Modoc. There you go. Trump Modoc. Oh, look at him boy. with his tiny little hands. Yeah. Oh, so cute. That's a commentary. Wait for that. So Rose good. Um, yeah, this is, this is an amazing issue. We got... Spider Gwen, Penguin. That's cool. That's so good. Spider it's Gwen. just a really fun compilation she of seems some, very punny. some stories. She is. Yeah. She's extremely punny. She's yeah. super punny and amazing. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Walt, what's your pick of the week? Okay, so I have a couple. So there's been a, over the past few years, they've been re releasing the entire Ben Riley run called uh, the Complete Clone Saga Epic, which also turned into the Complete Ben Riley Epic. It's 11 giant volumes like this. And I'm still making my way through them. I'm only on the sixth volume. So it's a long way to read. But They're if a little you want, hard to find, aren't they? Um, no, you can Somewhere. find them on, on uh, Amazon, most of them. I mean, uh, there's like one, I think volume four is a little bit difficult to find, but you can find a used one uh, on Amazon or something like that. But yeah, it's really cool because you get to see every single book that he, he was ever really in since the 90s. And I'm reading through it right now. And I can see why people kind of didn't like some things about Ben Riley, about the whole Clone Saga thing, because it went on for so long. But the main idea is still really cool. So I have that. Also, the, the Clone Saga, they went back and did it. Uh, Tom DeFalco went back and redid the Clone Saga in just six issues. And they called it the real Clone Saga with a lot of different things happening. So these are really cool. It's a more uh, streamlined version of them. So thanks for spending that out Who's there. Who's that? Um, who's who? The blonde and the headband. That's that's Gwen Stacy. <gasps> oh, who's that? Yeah, oh. not Gwen Poole or Spider Gwen. It's Gwen Stacy, Gwen unfortunately. Well, Spider Gwen is. It's actually just is Gwen Stacy. The other ones aren't Gwen. Stacey. Right. Well, whatever. Yeah. There's a Gwen in the name. Same. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's if you're looking for a more condensed version of that storyline, check out these six issues. They're in trade back, trade paperback form right now. So go and check those out. Also, just want to mention really quick. These are the first comic books I ever bought at a. A comic book shop Aww. when I was like eight. Um, yeah, so these are these are Spider-Man, Ben Riley. I've been with him since the beginning. <laughs> okay, so that's awesome. That's what I wanted to mention. Well, thank you very much, guys. That was really enlightening on those two awesome characters. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you guys want to read a little bit more of them. Let us know who you think won this argument, mm. this little verses here. Who, or who's the cooler who's, character? Who is cooler even still? as an alternate Spider-Man. Yeah, Who's your favorite sure. alternate Spider-Man? All right. Now be sure to ch tune in next week. We'll be talking about our favorite comic book writers and artists. Mm -hmm. and That's right, that all comic issue be, guys. We yeah. got a special awesome guest that he's uh, he's going to be here, so wait to check that out. And it uh, it's a great episode. Can't wait to talk about that one. So for uh, social media, where mm -hmm. will we find you guys at? Well, you can find me at, at awesome underscore Walter on Twitter. That's where I'm at. All right. I <laughs> I'm on uh, Twitter, Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out our Facebook, where this Thursday I will be talking about uh, Spider Gwen on Ultimate Spider Man, who's uh, appearing in this week's episode. It was up Saturday the 17th, once this episode's up. Uh, so we'll talk about the Return to the Spider Verse Part 4. Cool. So awesome. I'm excited to see her on there and see uh, voice acting and stuff. We'll see how. Uh, how good. Yeah, I'm excited. New medium turtle. Awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. And you can find me on Facebook.com slash Awesome Porter. So from everybody here, I'm Brian Porter. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next page. Swip. Swip, 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 swip. swip. <laughs>